Welcome. God bless you. My name is Stephen. I'm the pastor of Graffiti Fellowship Church in Brooklyn, New York, and it's time for today's daily devotion. Our daily devotion videos um, are a series of videos that, uh, where we just read a chapter from the Bible together each day. We read them in order, start at the beginning of a book, and go to the end, and we're reading the Gospel of John right now. We've started at the beginning of the New Testament, we're reading through it in order. And so you'll find a playlist with all the chapters of Matthew, of uh, Mark, of Luke, now of John. We're almost finished with John today. We're reading chapter 19. This is the third to last chapter in the Gospel of John. And chapter 19 is about average length. Looks like it's 42 verses. And we're going to see here, Jesus has been arrested in chapter 18. He's gone before Pilate. Pilate doesn't find him guilty of any crime. He realizes this is a political um, this is a political issue. This is not a criminal issue. But the people, the Jewish leaders and those they are influencing, do not consent to the release of Jesus. And though Pilate is the authority, he's also tasked with keeping order and he fears, uh, that there'll be a riot if he doesn't comply. They're demanding Jesus' execution. Pilate finds him, he, he, he doesn't find him guilty. But he also knows that the people may put his position, and indeed his own life, in jeopardy if they rebel. And so that's his concern. That's where we pick up in the story uh, in John chapter 19. So let's read now, beginning in verse 1. Then Pilate had Jesus flogged with a lead-tipped whip. The soldiers wove a crown of thorns, and put it on his head, and they put a purple robe on him. Hail, King of the Jews. They mocked him, and they slapped him across the face. Pilate went outside again and said to the people, I'm going to bring him out to you now, but understand clearly that I find him not guilty. And then Jesus came out wearing a crown of thorns and a purple robe. And Pilate said, look, here's a man. When they saw him, the leading priests and temple guards began shouting, crucify him, crucify him. Take him yourselves and crucify him, Pilate said. I find him not guilty. The Jewish leaders replied, by our law, he ought to die because he called himself the son of God. When Pilate heard this, he was more frightened than ever, and he took Jesus back into the headquarters and again asked him, Where are you from? But Jesus gave no answer. Why don't you talk to me, Pilate demanded. Don't you realize that I have the power to release you or crucify you? And then Jesus said, You would have no power over me at all unless it were given to you from above. So the one who handed me over to you has the greater sin. Then Pilate tried to release him, but the Jewish leader shouted, If you release this man, you are no friend of Caesar. Anyone who declares himself a king is a rebel against Caesar. When they said this, Pilate brought Jesus out to them again. And then Pilate sat down on the judgment seat of the platform that is called the stone pavement in Hebrew, Gabbatha. It was now about noon on the day of preparation for the Passover. Pilate said to the people, look, here's your king. Away with him, they yelled. Away with him, crucify him. What? Crucify your king? Pilate asked. We have no king but Caesar, the leading priest shouted back. And then Pilate turned Jesus over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus away, carrying the cross by himself. He went to the place called the Place of the Skull in Hebrew, Golgotha. There they nailed him to the cross, and two others were crucified with him, one on either side, with Jesus between them. Pilate posted a sign on the cross that read, Jesus of Nazareth, King of the Jews. The place where Jesus was crucified was near the city, and the sign was written in Hebrew, Latin, and Greek so that many people could read it. Then the leading priest objected and said to Pilate, Change it from King of the Jews to He said, I am King of the Jews. Pilate replied, No, what I've written, I've written. When the soldiers had crucified Jesus, they divided his clothes among the four of them. They also took his robe, but it was seamless, woven in, a, in one piece from top to bottom. And so they said, rather than tearing it apart, let's throw dice for it. This fulfilled what the scripture says. They divided my garments among themselves and threw dice for my clothing. That's what they did. Standing near the cross were Jesus' mother and his mother's sister Mary, 
the wife of uh, Cleopas, uh, and Mary Magdalene, when Jesus saw his mother standing there beside the disciple he loved, he said to her, Dear woman, here is your son. And he said to his disciple, Here is your mother. And from then on, this disciple took her into his home. Jesus knew that his mission was now finished, and to fulfill the, script, the scripture, he said, I am thirsty. A jar of sour wine was sitting there, so they soaked a sponge in it, put it on a hyssop branch, and held it up to his lips. When Jesus had tasted it, he said, It is finished. Then he bowed his head and released his spirit. It was the day of preparation, and the Jewish leaders didn't want the bodies hanging there on, on the next day, which was the Sabbath, and a very special Sabbath, because it was the Passover. So they asked that their legs be broken, then their bodies could be taken down. So the soldiers came and broke the legs of the two men crucified with Jesus. But when they came to Jesus, they saw that he was already dead, so they didn't break his legs. One of the soldiers, however, pierced his side with a spear, and immediately blood and water flowed out. And this report is from an eyewitness giving an accurate account. He speaks the truth so that you can also believe. These things happened in fulfillment of the scriptures that say not one of his bones will be broken and they will look on the one they have pierced. Afterward, Joseph of Arimathea, who had been a secret disciple of Jesus because he feared the Jewish leaders, asked Pilate for permission to take down Jesus' body. When Pilate gave permission, Joseph came and took the body away, and with him came Nicodemus, the man who had come to Jesus at night. He brought about 75 pounds of perfumed ointment and made myrrh and aloes. Following the Jewish burial custom, they wrapped Jesus' body with the spices in long sheets of linen cloth. The place of crucifixion was near a garden. And so, because it was the day of purification of the Jewish Passover, and since the tomb was close at hand, they laid Jesus there. That concludes John chapter 19. Thank you so much for participating in today's daily devotion, and uh, I hope including some of God's Word today has uh, edified you. That means built you up, encouraged you, and uh, it might do the same for some others. So if you know someone else who uh, might be interested, please feel free to share this video. I uh, hope you join us again next time as we see the resurrection of Jesus in John chapter 20. God bless you.